Hi folks, welcome to this video on nutritional aids. I've called this nutritional aids part one because this is uh, quite a big section of the course. So other nutritional videos that I've done are to do with hydration and um, also physiological aids, pharmacological aids. But we're going to have a look at the, what I've called part one, which is strength versus endurance training. How would the diet for someone who's doing strength training differ to that and be similar to that of someone who is doing endurance training? And we're going to look at endurance training first. So with endurance training, carbohydrates are key. Remember, they are the primary energy source. And, you know, we sit in a balanced diet. A normal person, in inverted commas, would, you know, 55% of what they eat every day should come from carbohydrates. When we're talking about endurance athletes, we're talking about 70, maybe 75% of what they eat every day should come from carbohydrates. Because obviously this is someone who's training, covering a lot of miles. So they are going to have to consume a lot of carbohydrates. It's like driving the car a long distance. You've got to put plenty of fuel in the tank or else it's not going to complete the journey. Exactly the same with your body and carbohydrates. And just to highlight the importance of carbohydrates to endurance runners, if you had someone who was working at moderate intensity for up to one hour a day, they would need to consume five to seven grams of carbohydrates for every kilo they weighed, uh, you know, per kilogram body mass per day. So someone who weighs 50 kilograms, you know, that's between... 250 and 350 grams of carbohydrates per day. In contrast to that, someone who trains at higher intensity for more than four hours, that's a national standard runner, international standard runner, they would have to consume 10 to 12 grams per kilogram of body mass per day. So essentially double what the, you know, what the, uh, the person who's running an hour a day will have to consume. So the more miles, the higher the intensity, the more carbohydrates you're going to need to consume. So what might this look like in reality? Let's say you've got an event coming up. You've got to have a pre-event meal. Now, three hours before the start of your race, if you are an endurance athlete, you're going to eat a slow digesting carbohydrate meal, otherwise known as a low glycemic index or low glycemic index food. This is what this diagram is here, glycemic index. Low glycemic index foods are slower to digest. They don't have such a big hit on your blood glucose levels. That's because they're full of glycogen, that slow-release carbohydrate, your starchy products. And as you can see here, you know, there's a few things on there that you might be familiar with, you know, fettuccine, that kind of pasta that is very slow um, to release uh, carbohydrates into your bloodstream. So it's a low glycemic index food. It's going to fill you full of glycogen. Uh, so that's going to, you know, longer to digest, hence why we're only three hours before. But ultimately, when it's in our system, it's a storage, it's a store of glycogen ready to use for our event. And then, one to two hours before the event, just a little bit before, eat a smaller fast digesting meal that is a high glycemic. So foods from this end of the glycemic index, that's going to top up any glycogen that you've used inadvertently in the time between, you know, from time three hours before the event up until this point. But it's also going to help maintain your blood glucose because this is faster digesting carbohydrates. It's going to get into your bloodstream very quickly. It's just going to maintain that blood glucose just before your event. So you are pretty much fully fueled up, ready to go. The glycogen stores are nice and high. The blood glucose has been maintained. You are fueled, ready for your event. So during the event now, well, it's quite simple. If your event lasts longer than an hour, you've got to consume regular amounts of high glycemic index foods. So the ones that get into your bloodstream very quickly, very quick to digest, to allow you to top up your glycogen, top up your blood glucose levels. If your event lasts less than 45 minutes, there is no point in consuming any carbohydrates during your event. You should be fully fueled up to last you a minimum of 45 minutes. So any additional carbohydrates that you consume, they're just not going to get used up. So they're the general rules in terms of what you should be consuming during activity for an endurance athlete. So then finally, post event, generally it's a case of replacing what you've lost. Because, you know, if you're an athlete, you might have to compete or train again tomorrow. So what we've got there is consume a combination of high and low GI foods. Just get the carbohydrates into your system within 30 minutes of finishing. So you don't go dizzy or lightheaded and you start the replacement process straight away. And you can repeat this, i.e. have another 30 minutes of high and low GI foods every couple of hours for up to about six hours after the event. And that's going to ensure that you have you fully replaced 
all your glucose and glycogen levels. Just a quick recap, where I put GI, I obviously mean glycemic index, just uh, an abbreviation of glycemic index. That would be the strategy for an endurance athlete. Of course, they need protein. Of course, they need fats. But when you're an endurance athlete, the priority is carbohydrates. That's what you need to be consuming the bulk of, as that's what's going to help you last for your event. Now, let's have a look at a strength training uh, dietary plan in contrast to an endurance one. And what we can see here is often few, uh, sorry, more, but uh, smaller meals per day. So what we're talking about is maybe five to six smaller meals per day, having them every few hours, so evenly spaced out. Within these five to six meals, we're going to try and get up to 30% lean protein. Remember I said the endurance athlete would consume 75% you know, of their, of their diet would come from carbs. And, you know, a normal person, it would be about 50-55%. A normal person would have 10-15% to 15 protein every day, whereas a strength trainer, someone trying to bulk up, will have double that, 30% lean protein, because they're trying to increase muscle growth and repair. However, our strength trainer is also going to consume complex carbohydrates or low GI foods, like our endurance trainer is. Those carbohydrates that don't have an immediate impact on blood glucose levels, these people are still training, they're just in a different form of training, so they still need the fuel, they still need the carbohydrates, the glycogen to have slow release to last them for their weight sessions and resistance sessions. These athletes will have limited fat intake. Fat can only be broken down aerobically with oxygen. These people who train strength training don't do much aerobic training, it's all anaerobic. If they eat fat, chances are it's going to stick to their body. They're not going to get a chance to burn it off. So they've got to have limited fat intake, and the fat they are going to focus on are going to be your unsaturated fats, your omega-3 fatty acids in your fish oils, your extra virgin olive oils, things like that, the ones that are good for controlling inflammation and the reasons that we said in the nutrition video. So before, uh, before a strength session, a resistance session, our pre-event meal it's going to be 30 to 60 minutes before, eat a small meal, one of these, five to six small meals a day, that consists of fast digesting carbs this time, similar to an endurance runner. You know, you just before, immediately before, an hour before, that's when you want to be eating your high GI foods, the ones that get into your bloodstream quickly, digested quickly. Why will they not eat loads of um, low GI foods in this time period? They won't digest in time. Probably the meal before this one had a lot of the complex carbohydrates, the low GI. But you know, because they're eating regularly, we're talking about the, the, the first meal before a training session. So this one just before, make sure you get some high GI food, some quick absorbing, quick digesting carbohydrates, and you get some protein ready in your system for when you start your training session. So finally then, I've not got mad, not gone mad, so I have not missed out um, during. The reason being, very often, Strength trainers will not consume anything during their training session. Why? Well, they are burning a lot of calories, but not as many calories as someone who's doing an endurance training session or, you know, an endurance based session because they are constantly moving. Where if you think about strength training, it's a combination of work and rest intervals. So there's not that constant burning of calories. So this should have fueled them up pretty much fully for their event. And remember, like we said, those that were consuming high levels of carbs in endurance training, they're working for four hours at a time. But, you know, essentially non-stop during those periods. Whereas, like I said, strength trainers are going to have a mixture of work and rest intervals. So strength trainers will just have a pre-event meal and a post-event meal. And with this post-event meal, it's usually consumed within two hours. So they'll eat a meal consisting of carbohydrates, again, high and low GI foods. Again, replace those that you've lost during training. That's what you've got to do. You've got to have a, another session tomorrow or later on in the day. So you've got to put fuel back in the tank. But they're also going to have high quantities of protein as well. Because this is where, you know, following the training session, this is where the adaptations take place. This is where the muscle growth and repair will take place. And often with strength trainers, it's in the form of protein shakes. They're more easily absorbed, digested quicker in terms of the protein. Protein is a solid, you know, when you eat meat or you eat high, high volumes of dairy products to get protein in. They sit in your stomach a long time and they take a long time to digest. Whereas shakes, protein shakes are in the system very quickly, very easily absorbed. So that's why they're slightly more beneficial to people who need to consume high amounts of protein. So this was everything to do with timings of meals and what the meals should be made up of in terms of endurance and strength training. Like I said, there's other videos that I've done for nutrition. 
as well on hydration, glycogen loading, supplementation. But make sure you have a look at those so you can see all the different types of things that these athletes will take. Hope you found this one useful, folks.